Hello again everyone and welcome back to Programming in Access 2013. My name is Steve Bishop. Today's video is going to be a continuation of our series on Access SQL or SQL. More specifically today we're going to be talking about adding rows of information to an already existing table. This process is sometimes called appending data. So let's go ahead and hop out and go into our database. And here we have our query that we wrote in our last video that took all of the information from this select query and inserted into a new table called table one temp by using the into statement at the end of our select statement. Okay, and that created our table one temp table. Now, I just wanna show you here, here's the three rows of information that are returned from the select statement, and they are the same three rows of information that we find in the table one temp table. Now, what I'd like to do is just to demonstrate the process of, oops, the process of adding information, adding data from one query and adding it to another table, I'm just going to go ahead and use the same select query because it has all of the appropriate information for me, uh, you know, easily available. That way I don't have to go out and create a whole brand new query. But you could use any query that you'd like, any select query that you wish, that's going to return the appropriate type of information, such as a customer name, an address type, a detention line, address, city, state, zip code, etc. So as long as the data that you're returning is the same value types as what you want to put into the table that you're going to be uh, adding information for, then you're perfectly fine. So if I wanted to grab from a vendor's table or the contacts table instead of the customer's table, you could certainly do that, okay? But for right now, we're just gonna use the same select query just for expediency here. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a new query. And I'm just gonna go ahead and paste the SQL query back into there. But I need to drop the into statement here because we're not making a new table. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. So there's our select statement that's going to return the same three pieces of information. When we're done adding rows of information to our table one temp table, and we've successfully appended information to it, we should be getting duplicates of each one of these rows. So we should end up with six rows. Uh, Metro Properties Build to address should be on here twice. The Hamster Wheels Inc. Office address should be on here twice. And the Metro Properties Office address should be here twice. That would mean that I properly appended data to this table one temp table. Okay, so let's go back into the SQL query. And now how do you add rows of information to an already existing table? That's simply a matter of adding some new keywords to our query. And that is insert into. And that comes before our select statement that's actually going out and grabbing that information. Now, after our insert into statement, we need to specify it, the name of the table that we're going to be adding the information to. That would be table one temp. We also need to specify the names of the columns of table one temp that we want to add information to. So not just the name of the table, but each individual row that we want to add information for because you can actually leave off the zip code or the city or attention. You can leave that information blank when you're inserting information into a table. You don't need to fill in the entire row. So let's go ahead and go back uh, into, oops, that wasn't where I wanted to go. I wanted to go to my query here. Let's give it a second to sit here and spin. All right, there we go. So we're gonna add in parentheses the names of each ones of those columns. So the first one was customer name. And you'll notice again, I'm putting customer name in brackets because there is a space in the name of that particular column, okay? Customer name has a space, so I need to have a uh, put customer name in brackets. Then I'm gonna put a comma, and I'm gonna give it the next uh, the next column name that comes from table one temp here. The next column name is address type. So we're gonna go ahead and add address type. Again, since there is a space in the name of the column, I need to put it in brackets. Then we have attention, address, city, state, and zip. None of these have spaces in them, so I'm okay to leave out the, uh, the brackets. So we have uh, attention, we have address, we have city, state, and zip. And then I'm gonna 
end my parentheses here. So in parentheses now are all the names of the fields from table one temp that I want to add information to. Okay, so one thing you may have noticed here is that I put these in the same order inside of these parentheses in the same order as what I have here in my select statement. So my select statement, the first uh, column that's returned is customer name. So the first column in my parentheses is customer name. Then we have address type matches to address type and attention matches to attention, etc. Now these names don't have to match up. So as a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the aliases here. So you'll notice I don't really need to have the column name be the same as what is in the parentheses here. My select statement, the column name that I'm getting it from, doesn't need to match up to what's in here. Okay, So I'm going to just go ahead and get rid of the aliases here. And again, that's because you can take information from any other table, no matter what, uh, what the name of that column is, as long as the order is correct in how it's laid out here in your select statement, the first column in the select statement will go into the first column mentioned in your parentheses, and the second one will go into the second, and so on and so forth. So the naming doesn't really matter as far as what's in your select statement. Of course, it does matter what's in your parentheses there. All right, hope I didn't lose anybody there. Hope I didn't confuse anybody. So let's go ahead and run this query. And we'll see you're about to append three rows of data. Go ahead and click yes. Take a look at my table, which I'm going to have to close and reopen here. And you can see we have the same three rows of information as what we have up here. We've added successfully appended that information again to the table. Now there's one thing that I need to point out here. If in my table, I've got a field which is required. So we've got customer name here. Right now it's not required, but I'm going to go ahead and make it required. Now I'm going to save that so that now I've got customer name is required field. And you will see this on a lot of tables. You'll have a required field, especially for foreign keys and primary keys. You're going to be required to add uh, add information to those particular fields if you're going to be inserting any new rows into that table if there's a required field you must be adding information to that field and just to demonstrate that I've made customer name required and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off customer name and I'm also gonna take off address type okay so now we just have attention address city state and zip I'm gonna go ahead and take off customer and address type so that we have the same pieces of information, the same number of, uh, you know, number of rows being returned from my select statement as what I'm requesting here in my parentheses. And now when I try to run this, I'm going to, it's gonna say I'm gonna append three rows, I click yes, and we have an error, okay? Cannot append all the records in the append query. Microsoft Access set zero fields to null due to type conversion failure and didn't add zero records. Okay, so these are basically different reasons why it wouldn't have been able to add a row. And you'll see here we have three records due to violation rule or validation rule violations. That means we tried to add three rows of information to that table, but we since we are requiring one of those rows to have data and we're not specifying it here in our query, it's not going to allow us to do it, okay? So let's go ahead and back out here and let's go ahead and fix this. Let's go, oh, uh, let's see. Let's just go ahead and copy this sucker back in here. All right, drop our into, and we have customer name. And I'm going to leave the uh, the address type. I'm going to get rid of that in our query here, in our select query. Just so you can see, I can add rows of information to that table one temp, uh, but leaving certain rows empty. I can do that as part of my query. Just as long as that row that I'm leaving out is not a required field. So let's go ahead and run this. Says I'm about to add three rows. 
And let's open this sucker up, and there we go. There's the same three rows of information, but now you'll notice that the address type, since I left it out of our select query, and I left it out of the, uh, the rows specified in parentheses, it's leaving it blank. But it's the same three rows of information as what we had up here. So there you go. That is an insert into statement, and that is how you add rows of information to a table. In the next video, I'm going to demonstrate to you how you can actually uh, verify and make sure that you are adding only rows of information that aren't already on the table. And that's something that you guys are probably going to want to be able to do because you don't want to have these type of duplicates.